Welcome to ECE Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we were discussing how to prove that light travels in a straight line. We looked at the cardboard experiment and the straight pipe experiment. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss shadows as a proof that light travels in a straight line. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain what a shadow is, list the two types of shadows, and then finally explain how the two types of shadows are formed. So we are going to begin with the definition of a shadow and then look at the types of shadows. So we are going to define a shadow as a shade cast by an object blocking direct rays of light. So you can form a shadow by blocking the direct rays of light. Like in this case, if you have a candle here, it's a candle wax, which is a source of light. And then you have an opaque object there. Then you have a wall. This is a wall here. This is a wall. Then this is an opaque object. Then you have the source of light. You have the source of light here. Then now this source of light will emit some rays. So a ray will come here where we don't have an opaque object. It will pass. On top of this one, a ray will go where we don't have an object. It will pass through like that. But now, where we have an object, this light will be blocked from reaching the wall. Then now, behind this opaque object, we will have a shade. We will have a shade. And this is what we call a shadow. So a shadow is formed when light is blocked from reaching a certain part of a, a surface. And the shade which is formed is what we call a shadow. Then now we have two types of uh, shadows which can result under different conditions. And I want to start with the first one which we call the umbra. Umbra is a total darkness shadow. The shade which is formed when the region does not get any light at all. And this shadow can be formed like this. Let's say you have, let's start with umbra. This is umbra shadow. So if you have a source of light here, this is the source of light. Then this is a candle wax. Then you have an opaque object here. Let's say it's big like that. This is the opaque object. Then you have a wall behind this opaque object. This is a wall. This is the object. Then now in this case, if this source of light produces some rays or beams, then the first ray will go where you don't have the object, it will go straight to the wall. Above this where you don't have the object, it will go to the wall. But the rays which will be in touch with this opaque object will be blocked from reaching the back of this object. So here, this part will receive no ray of light at all. This part behind this opaque object will receive no ray of light at all. So where now you have total darkness and there's no light at all, that's what we call the umbra shadow. Umbra shadow, total darkness. Then now we have the other um, type of a shadow which we call a benumbra shadow and this is a partial darkness. Partial darkness it means that region will get some light but the light will not be so bright so that it forms a, a clear surface. So in this case if you have if you want to investigate now benumbra benumbra that is the second type of shadow. So in this case you have your source of light here. Let's say it is such a, a, a small or yeah, let's call it it's big like that. Then now you have an object, the opaque object you have in this case now 
is slightly small and then now you have your wall there this is your wall this is a wall then this is the object then this is the source of light then now if this source of light now emits some rays or a beam of light if this is source of light emits some rays let's say in this case you will have a ray coming from this point it will go to the wall a ray coming from this point will go to the wall then we have another ray coming from this point here going through that point it will go to the wall then we have another ray coming from this point here it will go and go to the wall like that and now what you will realize behind this object or this opaque object we have a region here which does not receive light at all so it will remain as a total darkness and remember we have called it umbra so the place which will not receive light at all will be umbra but now as you can see there's a region here where these two light will intersect and it will form this light will intersect but it will be behind the object so this part will receive partial uh, uh, rays and in this case we are going to call them penumbra penumbra it will receive some rays but it will not be so bright as the front part of this object so this one is called penumbra so the penumbra part in this case will be at the top and at the bottom there this is also penumbra so as you can see for penumbra to be formed the rays are intersecting and therefore the intensity of light though it will be low but there will be some light but for umbra shadow there's no ray which will be touching that part it's total darkness so that is the difference between the two rays or the two shadows formed uh, when light is blocked from reaching a certain region of a place or a wall or a surface now from what we have just discussed and you can move back and confirm from the diagrams we have drawn for you to have umbra shadow you need only two rays of light and then for you to have both umbra and penumbra you need at least four rays of light but now how do you form only two rays of light for you to have only two rays of light you need what we call a point source a point source will produce only uh, two rays of light which will be used to form a shadow which we call the umbra so if we have our point source here this is our point source if i can label it point source then in front of the point source you take an opaque object like this one here you place it there opaque object which will not allow light to pass through and then behind the opaque object you put a screen you put a screen there this is a screen so this is the screen and then this point source is going to produce only two rays one ray will go below this opaque object let me label the opaque object here opaque object so this one ray will go below this opaque object like that then let me draw below this opaque object like that then this is a ray remember it must have an arrow to show the direction then another one will go above this opaque object like that into that end should have an arrow then if any ray comes here it will be blocked definitely because this is an opaque object then now behind this opaque object there will be no there will be no ray of light here there's no ray at all then inside here what you will see there will be an umbrella shaped a shadow which will be formed like that and this one will be total darkness it will be total darkness 
and this dot of darkness is what we call umbra. So that is how umbra is formed. Now, the formation of this umbra is a proof that light travels in a straight line because if light was not traveling in a straight line, it means it will reach this point here, pass this opaque object, and then change direction, come and cover this space here, which is not or which does not have light. But now, since light has not done that, it means it can only travel in a straight line where there is no object. And if there is an opaque object, then it means it cannot change direction to cover the dark space or the, the place behind it where there's no light. So this is a proof. Formation of umbra shadow is a proof that light travels in a straight line. So for you to have a penumbra and umbra at the same time, you need more than four rays. And for you to have more than four rays, then you must have what we call extended source of light. And to have an extended source of light, you will make a large hole uh, on a cardboard. This is a cardboard, cardboard like that. Then you make a very large hole like that. And then you take an opaque object, you place it somewhere there. This is an opaque object, opaque object. Then now you bring a screen, you bring a screen here. This is your screen. This is a screen like that. Then you will be observing. Then what you will realize that if you put a candle wax here, say that the flame is in line with the hole, this candle wax is going to emit rays, several rays, more than one ray. The first ray here will go through this, it will, go be, it will pass beyond or below the object. A ray must have an arrow and drawn using a ruler, remember? Then you have another ray coming on top here, it will go to the screen. Then you have a ray from down here, it will go, it will go past the object on top there, it will go to that point. Then you have another ray from the top here, it will go down below the object and go to the screen. And now what you will realize is that there is a space between these uh, opaque object where there's no light which will be which or which will pass there and then there will be some part beyond this object where there will, there will be intersection of these two rays and then below here there will be an intersection of those two rays then now if you have your screen now if you observe your screen what you will see is that there will be a shadow which is formed at the center, it is total darkness. Then, since this object was circular, then beyond it, there will be a partial darkness. There will be a partial darkness beyond it. So the one which is at the middle is the umbra, and then the one which is partial is penumbra. So now the formation of this umbra and penumbra is also a proof that light travels in a straight line.